Now allow me to discuss the problems with video recording that I've heavily critiqued previously. In terms of video specs and performance, the 14 Ultra isn't much different from the 13 Ultra. Both have multiple cameras capable of shooting up to 4K 60 frames and 8K video. So for the most part, there's not much difference in the video shooting experience between the 14 Ultra and the 13 Ultra. Of course, there are some other improvements, like the front camera can finally shoot 4K 60 frames of video. It's often been a complaint that other phones could shoot 4K 60 frames with the front camera, uh, and now the 14 Ultra can do it too, but how's the effect? Since I rarely use the front camera for shooting, I'll put two clips of a young lady for comparison. Visually, I think the Sutra has more noise, or the X7 Ultra's front-facing resolution is better. With the beauty mode on, both can only shoot 1080p 30 frames, and personally, I still think the X7 Ultra has better picture quality with beauty mode on. Another significant improvement is that you can zoom while recording 4K 60 frames without stopping the video. You can see I am now starting to record at 4K 60 frames, then I directly click on this focal length, you will find it can transition smoothly, there is no stuttering at all. Previously, when we demonstrated this photography handle to everyone, we told you that you could adjust the lever in front for a non-sequential zooming. Why don't I like the default continuous zoom? Because, if, for example, when you're shooting this way, you might not accurately reach the optical zoom of the native lens. You might overshoot, like I accidentally overshoot to 0.9x. That would just be a crop of the ultra-wide angle, and if I don't get to 3.2x, it's a crop of the primary camera, or say I dial to 4.9x, it's actually a 3 times crop. So the video quality will be poorer, because it doesn't use the native lens, hence now being able to choose the focal length segment, when I switch during shooting I can precisely zoom to exactly 3.2x. Ultra-wide, it always captures the best quality that native lenses can fill the entire CMOS. As we often shoot outdoors, we have a lot of experience with perspectives like 1x, 3x, 5x, and ultra-wide. Before shooting, I can compose in advance through my eyes, and when I switch the camera's focal length, I can capture exactly what I want, which is very important to me. Prior to delving into resolution details, I'd like to touch on the rapid patter observed on the web where the camera quivers in such a way. What causes it to make noise? It's because there are optical image stabilization, OIS, elements inside. A lens equipped with OIS is expected to make noise with movement. Individuals lacking insider knowledge might suggest this sound indicates inferior quality, employing outdated reasoning to evaluate a product's worth, which is rather humorous to me. The 14 Ultra indeed makes a rattling noise when moved, and I'd wager it's largely because the lens apparatus is more substantial. The space for the stabilization components inside it is quite large. Why is it larger? When compared, you can clearly see that whether it's ultra-wide or using the main shooter of the 14 Ultra, the stabilization is very smooth when the camera is handheld and moving, similar to the motion of DJI's Pocket 3. Conversely, the X7 Ultra feels noticeably stiffer, and even when going up or down stairs in bumpy air scenarios, it still looks fairly stable. As for the X-Cross, it often suffers from stabilization failures. Upon comparison, you'll notice its footage shakes a lot. When I conduct comparison tests, I record videos for extended periods and often switch between different focal lengths. I've noticed that the stabilization issues tend to arise after shooting continuously for some time. Even though the latest firmware of the X7 Ultra claims to have fixed the stabilization issue, my tests show that it can still recur in a few cases. However, the 14 Ultra's 3X telephoto lens shows much better stability compared to the previous 13 Ultra. Screen shake is almost non-existent. The stability is superior to the X7 Ultra, especially when you're moving the camera by hand. The motion is very smooth. Consider that when using telephoto in daily situations, it's rare to walk and shoot at the same time. If you're standing still, the optical image stabilization of the phone's telephoto lens can very effectively stabilize the image. On the other hand, the Pocket 3 with its single 20mm wide-angle lens requires digital zoom to capture distant landscapes and the image quality will be significantly lower compared to phones with native telephoto lenses. Although, in dim lighting, when recording videos with this smartphone, the shutter pace slows, which causes an increase in visible motion blur. The sharpness doesn't match that of footage stabilized by a mechanical gimbal from Pocket 3. Hence, for the 14 Ultra to capture high-quality images in poor light, using a stabilizer is advisable. You'll notice the 14 Ultra offers outstanding stabilization, resulting in remarkably smooth footage even when operated handheld, nearly matching 
the steadiness of Pocket 3. This feature, I believe, is a noteworthy benefit. Professionals know the value of such a design and how it aids in actual shooting, rather than why anyone would shake their phone all day. I can't understand that. Hence, this is the huge difference between professional users and average digital consumers. If some people are just concerned about aimless shaking, then I believe my videos aren't designed for them, as they probably wouldn't understand them anyway. Now let's talk about the improvements in focusing. With the X model in daily use, unstable focusing can occur at various focal lengths. Even with the wide angle and the face right in front, it can keep losing focus. When shooting with a telephoto lens, if someone passes in front of the lens, it can take a long time for the focus to recover. Especially when shooting against the light or at night. The situation will get worse. Moreover, intense lighting on the set can interfere with the X7's autofocus, causing it to malfunction. The DJI Pocket 3 filmed at the same scene also struggled to focus. The two are akin to a matched pair of extraordinary talents. Conversely, the 14 Ultra generally focuses well in most situations without the long focus issues that plague the 13 Ultra. Furthermore, when shooting 4K at 60fps, since both phones can switch focal lengths without stopping the recording, there's a refocusing process during the switch, which starts out blurry then becomes clear, making the viewing experience less smooth. Sometimes, after switching the focus length, it won't refocus, leaving the frame out of focus for a long time. Sometimes, even manual focus attempts by tapping the screen don't work. Hmm. However, with the 14 Ultra, you can see it responds quickly to screen taps. I think the only issue with the 14 Ultra is its triple length portrait lens. In backlit conditions, such as when the background is bright, it often focuses on the background rather than the foreground subject, while the performance of the competitor's Ultra is much better. Just like taking photos when shooting videos from tricky angles, you'll find the X7 Ultra usually has more serious lens flare. Let's compare static video quality. During daylight, I shot in 4K at 60fps with an ultra-wide lens. Comparing the two, the 14 Ultra appears to have superior resolution, as you can see more detail on the roof tiles. A bit clearer. On the main camera, it seems there's not much difference between the two phones. Twice the crop? The pin fork is a bit better. With triple the contrast, it looks just like the photo. However, due to the 14 Ultra's triple zoom and macro lens group, the resolution is not as good as expected. However, at 5 and 6 times zoom, the X7 Ultra's performance is notably poorer. This isn't due to a focusing issue, but because it was evening and getting dark when these comparisons were taken. I speculate that the X7 Ultra, with its smaller aperture in the zoom lens, used a 3 times crop leading to this result. An hour earlier, the footage I randomly shot still shows decent resolution at 6 times zoom on the flagship Ultra. But it's quite obvious that the exposure is darker. When the light is bad, the zoom lens struggles with exposure. Compared to the Pocket 3, the 4 Ultra with its 50 million pixel oversampling clearly has much better resolution, not to mention at 3 or 5 times zoom. Pocket 3 only has a 20mm lens, which, if used to shoot distant objects, will greatly reduce image quality compared to the native lens. Thus, in night scenes, the super wide angle of the pin sail performs better. You might think this is because the X7 Ultra's super wide angle has a bigger sensor compared to the 4 Ultra. However, once you start moving and shooting, you'll find that the X7 Ultra's super wide angle often suffers from ghosting and double images. This is similar to the artifacting scene with DJI's Action 4. This problem stems from a bug in the multi-frame noise reduction algorithm that introduces repetitive textures into the image. So, the better static image quality is achieved through these tricky operations and doesn't reflect the phone's true capability to capture such good quality. This includes the main camera as well. In static image comparisons, the pin sail appears to match the 14 Ultra's main camera with an f1.6 aperture. But once against the light, the flaws of the cross-trade reveal themselves. In backlit conditions, shadow area resolution significantly drops compared to the 4 Ultra, losing high-frequency details. This is why I make comparisons in all sorts of scenarios. 
During daytime night scenes with or against the light, due to various inferior algorithms often used by different manufacturers, the image appears better in static comparisons. However, in scenarios that are closer to how users normally take photos, the image quality can deteriorate significantly. Look at those digital strategy videos. They just run around to test the stabilization, wander about and snap pictures without any practical experience of shooting with a phone, so naturally they can't identify these issues. Apart from the triple zoom, as we've mentioned before, the quad ultra, because of its smaller sensor and standard lens setup, tends to have more noise. In most situations, the resolution is not as high as X7 Ultra. However, this time, the Ultra's five times zoom, due to its larger aperture of f2.5 in dark conditions results in lower noise levels and better image quality compared to x7 ultra so if you use x7 ultra in dim light the image quality drops significantly when zooming from three times to six times in fact once when shooting with a five times telephoto i accidentally set the 14 ultra to 1080p at 30 frames per second and i was surprised to find that the 1080p quality was comparable to x7s's 4k even better in preserving highlights for example the white paper in the magician's hand and the white dove that appears aren't overexposed of course since the 14 ultra like the 14 ultra can shoot 8k video compared to the x7 ultra which can only shoot 4k the resolution at all focal lengths is significantly better. Some people may think that 8K is not important, but in some cases it's quite useful. For instance, if I want to capture a distant scene, 8K offers higher clarity than 4K, and it's truly superior. This includes night scenes, where 8K video provides better resolution than 4K video. Besides, the main camera now supports 4K at 120 frames per second mode. Previously, many people talked about how Pocket 3 could shoot slow motions in 4K at 120 FPS, which was a significant advantage over smartphones. But now the 14 series can also natively shoot 4K at 120 FPS, and this 4K at 120 FPS mode, when compared in terms of resolution, is superior. Greetings everyone, the parasol has taken off to an unknown destination. In the third segment, even the fine points of the remote brick wall have disappeared because we're indulging in the 4K 120fps. In comparison to the regular 4K 60fps, it seems there is little to no loss in visual quality, offering instead an expanded field of view. Why is that? Because when shooting in 4K 120fps, electronic stabilization can't be activated, and thus there's no cropping either. However, since the main camera still has optical stabilization, the footage can still be somewhat more stable when shooting handheld. It's important to mention that while recording 4K 120fps under man-made lighting, you may observe a significant flicker due to the power frequency in China being 50Hz. The 14 Ultra is limited to 4K 120fps and doesn't support the 4K 100fps option, which is a shame. The 4K 120fps feature, in contrast to 4K 60fps, allows for a four-fold slow-mo effect in editing, and the enhanced footage also offers a very film-like appearance. What if you use some AI software to interpolate it to, say, 480fps later on? With more data between frames for the calculation, the final video appears smoother than a 4K 60fps interpolated video. This 4K 120fps ability is not available on other phones, like the X72 which can only shoot 4K 60fps, and the X100 Pro can also only shoot up to 4K 60fps. If you need high frame rates, you could also opt for slow motion, where you can choose from 1080p, 240fps, 480fps, 960fps, or even 1920fps. After cross-comparing image quality, I found that even at 1080p, 120fps or 240fps, the image quality of the 14th model is still better than that of the X7 Ultra. So if you're into shooting with high frame rates, the 14 Ultra could be said to have the best image quality among phones. In professional mode, the 14 Ultra allows you to turn off digital stabilization, and you'll see that the main camera with a 23mm field of view is actually quite comparable to the DJI's Pocket 3. When the movie mode is on, digital image stabilization is also turned off, and you can only shoot videos at 2.401 ratio in 14K at 310 frames, but the 14 Ultra can shoot 4K videos at 60 frames under these conditions, making the gap even larger. Hence, the 14 Ultra lets you capture high frame rate 4K videos with a wider view. In practical use, one can engage a professional mode that may appear somewhat intricate. By activating this mode, you are enabled to create visuals with a cinematic 2.4.1 aspect ratio complete with a simulated background blur. Personally, this feature does not fully meet my expectations as it tends to generate an artificial look, particularly around the peripheries. Additionally, it's worth noting that video recordings in this mode are limited to a resolution of 1080p, which is a downside for me. The X100 Pro? Yes, it includes a cinematic portrait feature enabling you to record videos in 4K at a frame rate of 30 FPS for enhanced detail. Although I seldom utilize this movie setting, it comes with an advanced camera functionality for focus breathing compensation while adjusting focus, a rather specialized concept that I shall not delve into. Under normal video shooting conditions, I've also found that the 14 Ultra generally offers better dynamic range performance than the X7 Ultra. You can see, especially when shooting from inside a vehicle outwards or from indoors to outdoors, the 14 Ultra retains more detail in the highlights. Now, let's discuss issues with exposure and color. 
Consider ample outdoor illumination. The 14 Ultra often captures imagery with somewhat subdued contrast and acuity, in contrast to the X7 Ultra whose photographs exhibit elevated sharpness and contrast. These pictures might draw the eye initially, but they offer limited flexibility for lighter editing. Additionally, in scenarios with backlighting, the 14 Ultra tends to secure a more pleasing exposure with luminous faces, in opposition to the outcome is produced by the X7 Ultra. The depiction seems highly realistic. Faces tend to be on the subdued side, and while post-processing can help somewhat, it isn't very user-friendly for those who desire results directly from the camera or aren't adept at editing. However, it's quite problematic when the camera detects a face suddenly appearing in the frame, like when someone turns around unexpectedly. You'll notice the entire color tone, curves, and saturation levels change drastically, which is strange. It's unclear if this is related to face exposure priority settings. And have you noticed? The footage looks like a Xiaomi-produced log video that's only had saturation boosted, but not contrast. So, I'm suspicious that the 14 Ultra's other lenses, like the ultra-wide angle, the 3 times telephoto and 5 times telephoto, might actually be capable of shooting log video, but Xiaomi hasn't enabled this feature in the system. Therefore, I think there's untapped potential in the 14 Ultra. The current video mode color curves and the algorithm logic may not be the same as for photos. I suspect the photo adjustments might be exclusively done by Leica's technicians who haven't fine-tuned the video capture's color grading. All I can say is, is, I hope Xiaomi will improve this in the future, especially in terms of color or hue performance. If you're not satisfied with the colors in the ordinary video mode, it's not a big issue, because the 14 Ultra offers several professional video modes with substantial post-editing latitude. In professional mode, the 14 Ultra can still shoot log. I could demonstrate the pre-log shooting features as I've done on previous shows like the X7R comparison, where I ended up deleting the log footage. The X100 Pro, on the other hand, doesn't have a log option in professional video mode. In my comparison with the X90 Plus, which did offer log, you can see the differences between these models. Rivals have taken out the log, yet in real-world use it persists. This log is quite reliable, and on the 14th, Xiaomi's log footage proves to be significant. Relative to certain earlier Xiaomi smartphone logs, this one is an unequivocally functional log, boasting 10-bit robustness. Even with a touch of grading in post-production, there aren't noticeable gaps, and the result remains quite pleasing. And unlike camera logs, when we shoot, we tend to expose to the right as much as possible because there's a lot of headroom in the highlights. If you expose to the right, the noise level in the dark shadow areas can be relatively low. Xiaomi's log tends to automatically expose to the right, fully using the entire highlight area. When you can preserve a lot of detail in the highlights, the darker areas of the scene can get as much exposure as possible. With the main camera's f1.6 large aperture, such a large amount of light intake, you can see the noise control in the dark backlit parts in the sample is quite good, considering that this is a smartphone, and in such low light, I'm already very satisfied. Even in some extreme low light scenes, better than DJI's Pocket 3 in low light mode in terms of resolution and noise, performance is also better. Can you handle it? Under these conditions, Pocket 3's advantage in low light just disappears in front of the 14 Ultra. Of course, as some might say, Hey, the iPhone shoots pretty good video, right? It has ProRes RAW and it can also shoot log. But unfortunately, when I was comparing photos and shooting some iPhone of ProRes RAW log material, I found out that Xiaomi's log not only restores highlights better, but also due to the 1-inch sensor and f1.6 large aperture, the noise in the dark shadows is lower. Additionally, the 14 Ultra can completely turn off digital stabilization when shooting log videos, giving you a wider field of view than the iPhone's main camera. And that's not all. Xiaomi's log video bitrate is only 110 of iPhone's ProRes RAW video. iPhone video bitrate is around 500-600 megabits, but Xiaomi's video... Basically, it maintains between 50 and 60 megabytes. So if you're shooting vlog videos for a long period, it's Sutra, which is very low in storage space requirement on your phone. And as you can see, even after very intense color grading, the 14 Ultra's log video doesn't exhibit layering issues, only very slight. Due to the somewhat low bitrate, there are compressed color blocks, but I reckon you probably won't notice them much on the website due to a secondary compression of the video. So, if your daily requirements aren't high, Xiaomi's log allows you to have a minimal storage footprint at very low bit rates. Achieving a very wide dynamic range of video and ample post-color grading space, it's a highly usable log mode. Not only is there a log mode, but this time Xiaomi also provides many options for high dynamic range video.
While recording standard video, an HDR feature is accessible. You have the choice to activate it, akin to executing HDR composite photography. Previously, Xiaomi was renowned for its Dolby Vision videography, correct? Dolby Vision is an available option. With regular shooting, Dolby Vision is present, essentially being HDR but purportedly of superior quality. Nevertheless, in highly contrasting scenes, with the X7 Ultra, the HDR composition's marks are noticeably visible, especially around the edges where the tree branch meets the sky. The thick outlines are something I don't quite understand why when you're already shooting Dolby Vision, which is an HDR video, still go for the old method of pressing down the sky for HDR highlight composition. Also, I'm not sure if it's due to codec or curve issues. In shooting scenarios with complex stage lighting, noticeable color blocks can appear, but the 14 Ultra doesn't have this issue and the whole scene looks natural. Of course, I'm not sure if you can see what I'm describing in the online video, it's quite clear on my side. But if shooting in normal video mode, if this issue isn't present, this time the 14 Ultra has added a new mode. Press the upper left icon and you'll activate a feature named Master Shot. I have to say, I'm not the biggest advocate for Xiaomi's terminology. Often finding it obscure and not quite descriptive of the tech involved, I've put the Master Shot function to the test in the great outdoors and discovered that it's really a kind of HDR mode on par with Dolby Vision, if not as luminous based on waveform assessments, but it does present a considerable dynamic range. Fundamentally, it's a video setting straddling the dynamic range of HDR and Dolby Vision. Its color rendition, somewhat akin to the broad dynamic curves seen in cinema, differentiates it from routine video footage. Engage the master shot for more of a film-like ambiance, avoiding the flatness of log footage, yet steering clear of the stark vividness typical of raw camera output. It's a harmonious option for video enthusiasts prioritizing both dynamic range and color authenticity. And when you switch on Master Shot, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra steers clear of excessive color processing. Those infrequent color accuracy issues we've touched on with the 14 Ultra now seem to be circumvented. This mode is likely a boon for those less versed in the arts of color grading or tweaking log and Dolby vision clips, providing a straightforward path to a filmic appearance with minimal color grading effort in post. Definitely a feature worth delving into. However, this mode is limited to 4K at 30 frames per second. It exits automatically if you shoot in 4K at 60 frames per second. Also, only the main camera can use this mode. Switching to this mode, you'll notice that lens selection options disappear. Unfortunately, not all lenses support master shot, which is a pity. I wished it was like Apple, providing master shot for all lenses. But it's understandable, since high-end features like Dolby Vision, Log, are unique to 14 Ultra. But currently only feasible to record using the primary camera on account of the technological constraints of the X8 5T8, precluding the use of log video. Nevertheless, should the 15 Ultra have the capability to record log or high dynamic range videos at every zoom level, its presence would further challenge the market position of certain cameras. Nevertheless, I possess alternative methods to tackle this problem. Since many mobile lens attachments can be applied directly on the main camera and aren't very expensive, I purchased three lenses for just a thousand yuan covering ultra-wide 16mm, standard 16mm and macro, compared to the phone's native ultra-wide or telephoto lenses. Using the main camera increases sensor size and aperture, thus more light intake and stronger background blur. All this while also being able to shoot in 4K 120fps and log. So, I believe that pairing external lenses is more cost-effective than adding high-spec capabilities to other lenses. Plus, the size of the phone can be kept within reasonable limits. I'll explain how to maximize the shooting capabilities of the 14 Ultra with these external lenses in detail in a future episode. The capabilities we have examined pertaining to the Ultra resemble the expert photography setting, surpelling the Xiaomi 14 Ultra beyond the general smartphone category. It stands on par with APS-C cameras that are equipped with HR backlog log features and even matches full-frame cameras. Therefore, excluding the iPhone, other Android smartphones that fall short in these aspects simply don't stand a chance against the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. Alright, that concludes the overall review for the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. You can tell that Xiaomi has really invested effort in the 14 Ultra, systematically addressing various issues I've raised before, aiming to deliver a truly comprehensive professional photography flagship phone, clearly the 14 Ultra. 
Its flagship positioning isn't self-proclaimed. It truly dominates with hardware and algorithmic prowess over competitors. Look at Oppo's X7R, also featuring octa-core and primary lit 900. But what about its ROM X, or its log, or 4K at 120 frames? Calling it a mythic flagship, the master of imagery. At least it's evident Xiaomi really invests in RD. Both phones priced at 7000 Oppo might spend 3000 on KOLs to hype it up, urging you to buy, while Xiaomi invests that in engineers to push the phone's limits, offering better technology, making photography more convenient, easier, with higher quality, to help you effortlessly achieve creative goals. Might you make a different choice? Thanks for tuning in. I trust today's episode aided in your decision on purchasing the Xiaomi Mi 4 Ultra. Until we meet again, farewell.